This is part six in our series of lectures on infinite sets, and in this lecture we're going to consider the theorem which says that the denumerable union of denumerable sets is denumerable. So far there are a number of sets which we know to be um, denumerable, so here are, are some of them. We know now that the set of integers is denumerable. We know that if you take the Cartesian product of two denumerable sets, that the result is denumerable, and we know that if you take an infinite subset of any denumerable set, then that is itself denumerable. With this lecture, we're going to add to the uh, list of sets which we know to be denumerable. So let me quote the theorem for you. So the theorem starts with a collection of sets. So for each natural number n, we have another set a sub n. So that means a denumerable collection of sets. And each of the sets in the collection is assumed to be denumerable. Then the theorem asserts that if you take the union of all of those sets, then you merely get a denumerable set out of it. So I think of all of the results that we've looked at so far, this is perhaps the most surprising, because you know, one normally thinks of a union of sets as being much bigger than any of the sets that make it up, and yet this is saying from the point of view of cardinality that you really don't get any more when you take the union of all of these sets. Well, let's look at the proof of the theorem. We're going to begin the proof of the theorem by proving a, a very special case of the theorem. Namely, we're going to consider the special case where all of the a sub n's are pairwise disjoint. Okay, so by assuming that they're pairwise disjoint, I think we'll find it quite easy to complete the proof. And on the next slide, I'll show you how we can reduce to this special case in general. So what we're going to do is we're going to show that the union of all these a's has the same cardinality as n cross n, and since we know that n cross n is denumerable, then that will prove that this union is also denumerable. So for each of the m's, we know that a sub m is uh, a denumerable set, and therefore there exists a bijection from n into a sub m, and we're going to call that f sub m. So now we have a large collection of functions, uh, these f sub m's, and we're going to use them to build a function capital F on the Cartesian product. It maps the Cartesian product into the union. So what we do is we map a given ordered pair, m comma n, into f sub m of n. In other words, we use the first index to tell us which of the f's to use. The m tells us we should use f sub m, and the second index is what we evaluate the f sub m at. So I claim that this function is actually bijective, and uh, we won't have too much difficulty proving that. Let's first prove that it's injective. So we do it in the usual way. We give ourselves two elements of the domain, and we assume that the f values agree, and then we have to deduce that the that these two values are the same. Well, by definition, if these are equal, that means that these are equal. But you'll notice that f sub m1 maps into a sub m1, and f sub m2 maps into a sub m2. Now, all of the various a sub m's are considered to be pairwise disjoint, and therefore the only way that an element of a sub m1 could equal an element of a sub m2 is if the m's are the same. So m1 has to equal m2, and now that we know that, so this is really an m1 now, now that we know that, we know that f sub m1 is an injection, and therefore this equality implies, by injectivity, that n1 equals n2. So that gives us the m's are equal, the m's are equal, and the n's are now equal, and therefore the pairs are equal, and so f is injective. Now let's look at the proof of surjectivity. We have a function that maps into this codomain here, so we give ourselves an element of the codomain, and we have to produce something in the domain that maps over to it. Well, if y is in the union, then there has to exist an index, and I'm going to call it m, such that y is in a sub m. 
That's just the definition of the union, or saying that y is an element of the union. But now we've got an m in our hand, and that means we have an f sub m, and we know that f sub m is surjective, and this is an element of its um, codomain, and therefore there must exist an element in its domain that maps over to that y. But this is another way of saying capital F of mn is equal to y, and therefore f is surjective. So that completes the proof of the theorem in the special case that the a sub n's are pairwise disjoint. So now we're going to see that we can, um, how we can argue that we can always reduce to that special case. The way that we're able to reduce to the pairwise disjoint case is actually a set theory trick that's used um, from time to time. Um, and basically it is that if you have either a finite union of sets or even a denumerable union of sets, it's always possible to rewrite it as a new union of sets in such a way that the new sets are pairwise disjoint, but their union comes out exactly the same as the original union. So what we do is we introduce new sets, b sub 1, b sub 2, b sub 3, etc. And we define b sub 1 to be a sub 1. And then for the subsequent b's, we let b sub 2 be a sub 2 minus a sub 1. We let b sub 3 be a sub 3 minus the previous a's, namely a sub 1 union a sub 2, etc. Okay, so the, the, the general step b sub n will be a sub n, but it will remove all of the previous a's. And so by doing that, you produce a um, denumerable collection of sets b sub n. Um, they turn out to have the same union as the union of the a's, but they are now pairwise disjoint. So they have these two properties, that they're pairwise disjoint, but their union is the same. So now you might think, okay, now we can apply the result from the previous page to the set of b's to deduce that the union of the b sub n's is a denumerable set. But the catch is that by subtracting off things like this, you may be turning some of the b sub n's into finite sets. So for the n's in which the b sub n's are finite, what you want to do is you want to add elements to the b sub n's um, so as to make them denumerable so that you can apply the result on the previous page. And, and you, you have to do it in such a way that um, for the ends for which you add a denumerable number of elements, you just make sure that you add different elements to each of the sets to which you are adding elements so that the new sets you get really are still pairwise disjoint. But now we can apply the um, theorem on the previous page to those new sets to deduce that that union is um, denumerable, but that union will contain the union of the b's because we've obtained the, those sets by adding elements to the b's. So this uh, union of the b's is now a infinite subset of that denumerable set and therefore it is denumerable. So this is denumerable and therefore the union of the a sub n's, which this is the same as this, is also denumerable and that completes the proof.